वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल नो अबाउट द फाइव लिटरी टर्म्स फ्रॉम द बुक ग्लॉसरी ऑफ लिटरी टर्म्स रिटन बाई एम एश अब्राम्स एंड द लिटरी टर्म्स आर ब्लैंक वर्ड्स ब्लूम्सबरी ग्रुप बॉम्बास्ट बॉलराइज एंड बर्लिस्क सो लेट एस स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट वन ब्लैंक वर्ड्स ब्लैंक वर्ड्स कंसिस्ट ऑफ लाइन्स ऑफ आयम्बिक पंटामीटर मीन्स फाइव स्ट्रेस आयम्बिक वर्ड्स विच आर अनराइम्ड Hence the term blank of all English metrical form. It is closest to the natural rhythms of English speech, yet flexible and adaptive to diverse levels of discourse. As a result, it has been more frequently and variously used than any other type of versification. Soon after, blank verse was introduced by the Earl of Surrey in his translations of Book Two and and Four of Virgil's. the enid about uh, 1540 it became the standard meter of elizabethan standard meter for elizabethan elizabethan and later poetic drama a free from blank verse remained the medium in such 20th century verse plays as those of maxwell anderson and t s eliot john milton used blank verse for his epic paradise lost published in 1667 james thomson for his descriptive and philosophical seasons published in 1726 to 30 then william wordsworth for his autobiographical uh, autobiographical prelude in uh, published in 1805 then alfred lord tennyson for narrative idylls of king published in 1891 then robert browning for the ring the ring and the book published in 1868 and 69 and many dramatic monologues and ts read for much of the wasteland published in 1922 a large number of meditative lyrics from the romantic period to the present have also been written in the blank verse including coleridge's frost at midnight verse for tintern abbey tennyson's tears idle tears in which the blank verse is divided into five line stanzas and bellays stevens sunday morning so divisions in blank verse poems used to set off sustained passages are called verse paragraph so let us know next one bloomsbury group bloomsbury bloomsbury group is the name applied to an informal association of writers artists and intellectuals many of whom lived in bloomsbury a residential district in central L- london this group of friends began to meet at about 1905, 1905 for conversations about the arts and issue of issues of in philosophy its members who opposed the narrow post post victorian restrictions in both the arts and morality included the novelists uh, virginia wolf and e m forster the painters duncan grant and uh, venetia well virginia wolf sister who was venetia well bell the influential art critic critics clive bell and roger fryer the the iconoclastic biographer of ecturian personage lytton strache and the famous economist john menard keynes some members were linked not only by common interest in view points but also by complicated erotic liaisons both heterosexual and homosexual the bloomsbury group had an important influence on innovative literary artistic and intellectual developments in the two decades after the first world war which ended in 1918 next term is bombast bombast denotes a wordy and inflated diction that is patently disappropriate disproportionate to the matter that is signifies the many the many locens of even so fine a poet as christopher marlowe is at times inappropriate to its sense as when fastus declares in uh, which uh, dr fast in the play dr fastus which was published in 1602 in act 3 scene 1 the lines are now by the kingdom of infernal rules of six at chernan and fairy lake so which is to say by hats i would like to see rome bombast is a frequent component of in the heroic drama of the late 17th and early 18th centuries the pompous language of that drama is parodied parodied in henry fielding's tom thumb the great published in 1731 as the as in the note noted opening lines in the act 2 scene 5th in which the diminutive male lover cries oh hunicamus ka hunicamus ka oh 
the poem. So Fielding points out, note that this passage was specifically a parody of James Thompson's bombastic lines in the tragedy of Sophonisba, 1730, where the lines were, O oh, Sophonisba, Sophonisba, O, oh. O oh, Narva, O oh, Narva, O. Oh. So bombast originally meant cotton stuffing and in Elizabethan times came to be used as a metaphor for an over elaborate style. Next term is balderize. Balderize is to delete from an edition of a literary work passages considered by the editor to be indecent or indelicate. The word derives from the Reverend Thomas Balder, Thomas Balder, Baudelaire, who tidied up his family Shakespeare in 1818 by omitting as he put it, whatever is unfit to be read by a gentleman in the company of ladies. Jonathan Swift's Gulliver Travels, published in 1726. Shakespeare's play, The Arabian Nights. Uh, Shakespeare's plays and The Arabian Nights are often borderized in editions intended for the youngs and uh, until the 1920s, at which time the standards of literary property were drastically liber liberalized. Some compilers of anthologies, anthologies for college students availed themselves of Baudelaire prerogative in editing Chaucer. Next and last term is burlesque. The burlesque has been succinctly defined as an incongruous imitation, that is, is imitates the manner, the form and style, or else the subject matter of a serious literary work or a literary genre in verse or in prose, but makes the imitation amusing by the ridiculous disparity between the manner and the matter. The burlesque may be written for the sheer fun of it, usually, however, it is a form of satire. The part of satire ridicule may be the particular work or the genre that is being imitated or else the subject matter to which the imitation is incongruously applied or often both of these together. Burlesque, parody and travesty are sometimes applied interchangeably simply to equate these terms. However, is to surrender useful critical distinctions, it is better to follow to critique who Critics who use burlesque as the generic names and use the other terms to discriminate species of burlesque. We must keep in mind, however, that, that a single instance of burlesque may exploit a variety of techniques. The application of these terms will be clearer if we make two preliminary distinctions. First, in a burlesque imitation, the form and style may be either lower or higher in in level and dignity than the subject to which it is congressly applied. If the form and style are high and dignified but the subject is low or trivial, we have high burlesque. If the subject is, is high in status and dignity but the style and manner of treatment are low and und, uh, undignified, we have low burlesque. Second is, a burlesque may also be distinguished according to whether it imitates a general literary type of genre or else a particular work of or, or author. Applying these two distinctions, we get the following species of burlesque. First, varieties of high burlesque. Under this category, first is parody. A parody imitates the serious manner and characteristic feature of a particular literary work or the dis distinctive style of a particular author or the typical stylistic and other features of a serious literary genre and def deflates the original by applying the imitation to a lovely or comically inappropriate subject. For example, John Phillips' The Splendid Shilling, published in 1705, parodied the epic style of John Milton's Paradise Lost, published in 1667, by exaggerating its high formality and applying to the description of a tattered poet composing in a drafty attic. Then, Henry Fielding's In Joseph Andrews, published in 1742, parodied Samuel Richardson's, Richardson's, Richardson's novel Pamela, which was published in 1714-41 by putting a hearty male hero in place of Richardson's sexually beleaguered heroine and later on uh, Jane Austen poked good-natured fan fun at the genre of the gothic novel in Northanger Abbey, published in 1880. Second is mock heroic or mock 
heroic mock mock epic and mock heroic so it is a poem uh, that is type of parody which imitates in a sustained way both the elaborate form and the ceremonious style of the epic genre but applies it to narrate a, com a common place or trivial subject matter in a masterpieces of this type like the rape of the lock published in 1740 alexander pope views through the grandiose epic perspective a quarrel between the bell bells and elegance of his days over the theft of a lady's curl the story includes such elements of traditional epic protocol as supernatural machinery or voyage or on board ship a visit to the underworld and heroically scaled battle between the sexes although with metro metaphors hat pins and snuffs for we weapons the term mock heroic is often applied to the other dignified poetic forms which are purposely mismatched to a slowly to a lowly subject for example to thomas gray's comic ode on the death of a favorite cat published in 1748 now next is varieties of low burlesque see so under this category first is hoodie brastic poem The Hudibrastic poem takes its name from Samuel Butler's Hudibras, published in 1663, which satirized rigid Puritanism by describing the adventures of a Puritan knight, Sir Hudibras. Instead of do doughty deeds and dignified style of the tra traditional genre of the chivalric romance, however, we find the knightly hero experiencing mundane and humiliating misadventures, which are described in doggerel verse. and the ludic lud ludicrously colloquial idiom idiom then second is travesty the travesty mocks a particular work by treating its lofty subject in a gr grotesquely undignified manner and style as bellew put it describing a travesty of virgil's aeneid dido and aeneid aeneas are made to speak like fish wives and ruffians The New Yorker once published a travesty of Ernest Hemingway's novel Across the River and Into the Trees published in 1950 with the title Across the Street and the Intro Into the Bar and the film Young Frankenstein is a travesty of Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein Another form of burlesque is the lampoon a short satirical work or a passage in a longer work which describes the appearance and character of a particular person in a way that makes that person ridiculous it typically employs caricature which in a verbal description as in graphic art exaggerates or distorts for comic effect a person's distinctive physical feature or personality traits john dryden's epsilon and archetypal published in 1681 includes a famed 25 line lampoon of jimri dryden's contemporary the duke of buckingham the modern sense of burlesque as a theater from de derives historically from plays which mocked serious types of drama by an incongruous imitation john gay's beggar's opera published in 1728 which in turn became the model for the german three penny opera by bertrock bertolt brecht and karl weil published in uh, uh, born in 1928 was a high burlesque of italian opera applying its dignified formulas to a company of beggars and thieves thieves a number of musical plays by gilbert and sullivan sullivan in the victorian era were also high burlesque of grand opera so that's all about the the, the these literary terms thanks a lot for watching this video if liked by you please subscribe do comments and share the video thanks a lot once again for watching the video god bless us all